Hi, everybody. Welcome to Discover College Soccer. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Coach Sean from Brescia University there in Owensboro, Kentucky. Welcome, Coach. How's it going? How's it going? Thanks for having me on. No, thanks for being here. Uh, you know, we were chatting just here before. I, I coached against Brescia many, many moons ago, and, and my former school is now in your conference, so you get to see them all the time. But uh, but it's good to have you on. You're uh, entering your third season, is that right, with the women's program? Correct, yep. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about recruiting there for, you know, an NAI school in Owensboro. You know, what – when are you really starting to talk to players and kind of start building out that recruiting class? To me, you know, it, it's anybody who knows me knows I'm a super outgoing person. I'll, I'll talk to anybody. I, I love communication. Um, and I know like everybody says like with NAI, it's the wild, wild west. There's no recruiting rules and things like that. And it's not that we use that to our advantage. I think what the big thing that we try to do is that early stage, once we've identified a player, even if they are a freshman, if we've identified, hey, this is a player that we wanna keep our eye on, all we're doing is building a relationship, uh, just getting to know the player and spending that time over the next couple of years, uh, you know, knowing who they are, letting them know who we are. Um, and then once that that junior hits or, you know, that's when we're kind of, oh, hey, now, like, Maybe you should think about brushes. This, this, this would be a good place. So to me, it's all about developing those relationships with players. Um, you know, for us, typically a school like ours, it's year by year. Um, I unfortunately am still in the NCAA calendar in my mind, uh, trying to work ahead. Um, and so, you know, for us, it's if there's a player that's good enough, uh, you know, no matter the class, uh, you know, there's somebody that we're going to re reach out to. And, and if they decide that brushes where they want to go, uh, then that's, uh, you know, that's just that's fine by us. Right. Well, you know, when you're out recruiting or seeing players, you know, are there some must see stops uh, on the tournament circuit that you're you're trying to get to are the kind of the best places for you to see players? And, and then are you also taking in high school games? Does that fit into your recruiting at all? So I, I try to get into high, high school games as much as possible. Uh, and sometimes it can be difficult, especially in the fall. Uh, so I, I, even though my school's in Kentucky, I live across the bridge in Evansville, Indiana. Uh, and Evansville is a hotbed for, especially on the women's side, uh, for a lot of girls, high school soccer teams, uh, very successful ones around here. Um, so I try to get to those when I can. I definitely uh, built relationships with those uh, coaches. Some of the coaches actually used to coach a long, long time ago. Um, so it's always good to have that have that connection. But I think for us, the big stops, um, we're very, very big on the exact sports circuit. Uh, anytime that they've got something going on, typically you'll see uh, you'll see me there. Uh, but as far as like showcases go, uh, anything that's local, obviously something we're going to go to. So we have like a couple here in Evansville, but um, you have up in Indianapolis, you have Crossroads, which I think is one of the best ones uh, in the country. We're always going to be there. Uh, there's another there's Circle City. Obviously, we're also you know, just three hours from Cincinnati. So I can go to Gateway, I can go to Blue Chip, Kings Hammer, those uh, three hours from St. Louis, less than two hours from Nashville, uh, hour and a half from Louisville. So, you know, there's a lot of them that we can go to that are local. Uh, that's not gonna cost us a lot in our budget. You know, we're gonna be able to go and, and uh, uh, see some great showcases. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, we do get out to uh, down in Raleigh uh, at the, the showcase down there. Uh, it's one of my favorite ones to go to. Uh, and then obviously we hit up uh, anything that's remotely near us, ECNL wise or GA wise. I know that we just had a ECNL event uh, last um, last fall in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So it wasn't much for us to to get down there to to go there. But you know we're actually opening up a little bit more. I think you're going to see us. Um, a lot more uh, on the West Coast uh, this upcoming spring. Uh, we've kind of been working with our, our university and our admissions department um, about, you know, getting the Brescia name out there, getting the sisterhood out for everybody. Uh, so, uh, you know, people always make fun of me for where I go at all the time and how, how often I'm gone. We're just going to add more to that uh, and, and, get, and get our team out there where we can see the best talent in the country. We are excited to be part of Podcast Row at the 2023 United Soccer Coaches Convention in Philadelphia from January 11th to the 15th, and we hope we will see you there. The convention is the ultimate event for soccer coaches, administrators, and fans of the beautiful game. Ignite your passion through captivating presentations, on-field demonstrations, exhibits, and networking events for coaches at the youth, high school, college, and pro levels. Whether you are attending alone or bringing the whole coaching staff, there's no better place for soccer coaches to learn, network, and experience the latest trends in soccer education. 
Register now for the lowest possible price. Visit www.unitedsoccercoachesconvention.org to register. We can't wait to see you all in Philadelphia. No, that's that's great. Um, in terms of, of camps, do you like to uh, – I mean, do you guys host your own? Do you and your staff work other people's camps? How does that kind of fit into everything? It's both. Uh, camps at our school is something that's still kind of relatively new. We just, uh, we've had, since I've been there, just in the last year, because the, the, the other thing, it's, like, yeah, this is my third year, uh, but also the week I started is when the pandemic started. <laughs> uh, so it's like, it took us a long time to be able to kind of get back to normalcy, but we just ran our first camp last year or I guess last school year uh, in the in the springtime had a great turnout. We had over 20 kids sign up. Um, we had another one uh, this uh, this past summer uh, with 20 kids signed up again. Uh, you know, you got to start somewhere. I think that's one of our best things is um, we do a really good job putting our camp in uh, tied in with our admissions department. So there's a lot of a lot of groundwork between two different groups there uh, for one common cause. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we will do other camps. Uh, we'll go to other schools as well. Uh, a good friend of mine, Don Crow at uh, West Constance Stevens Point. Uh, I, I frequent up to hers uh, every so often. And obviously with the exact sports uh, in the winter time or when they do their one day camps, mainly we'll do local stuff, uh, Detroit, Indy, Nashville, Atlanta, St. Louis, Cincinnati, uh, but then when the summertime comes, we'll be on all of them. We'll go to California. We'll go to Virginia, Connecticut, Chicago, Texas, uh, Atlanta, uh, you know, anywhere that, that wants us to be there uh, for, for our staff or myself uh, to help out, then we're, we're more than glad to be there. Okay. Well, what, whether you're at one of those camps or, or any of those tournaments, kind of what is your hierarchy of things that you're looking for in a player, whether that's on the field stuff or off the field stuff? I think the off the field is number one. Uh, you know, I, I say all the time in, in my introduction email to recruits, what we're looking for is high character and then high quality. Um, you know, I, I think if you have a high character, the quality is going to be there or the quality is going to be developed. Uh, you know, we're also looking for people who are not at not at their peak as well in terms of their development. Uh, you know, people that we can continue to help grow uh, in their four years. Uh, then, you know, I think every coach has their own kind of little checklist um, of what they look for in a specific role and for us, um, you know, when we took over the program uh, as a staff, we really went through, so, okay, how can we simplify, um, you know, from all the places that we had all come from, whether it was from some of our staff that's coming from high school coaching, myself and others that are coming from college coaching, okay, what, what, is, what do we envision as the perfect number eight or the perfect number nine? Okay, now can we get that down to like four things that if we can see them do three of those four, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a player that we want to get on our list. So, um, you know, it's, it's just going through that checklist. Uh, and I, I've always said, like, you know, if you can hit two out of the four uh, and we can look at the other two, say, yeah, you know, we, we can we can develop that and make that happen. Uh, you know, for us, that's a, that just makes the process a little bit easier. So that way we're not sitting there waiting the entire time. OK, they got to go through all these uh, you know, all these tasks that we've got to see them do. We, we try to keep it simple uh, and then allow our minds to really kind of th think more of, OK, hey, I think in this situation, this player would be able to do this. Yeah, we, we can teach them to do that. Okay. Well, I always have to ask the, uh, the dollars and cents question. Um, so, you know, I'm not holding you to hard numbers cause I know <laughs> those are always changing, but yeah. can you just give me an overall, uh, kind of big picture view of what, what is a, a student athlete coming into Brescia, whether it's academic money, athletic money, mm -hmm. any other financial, what, just, what is the, the average kind of picture look like for somebody coming into school there? So Brescia just recently changed their scholarship packages on the academic side, and it's it's pretty incredible. So like our tuition is twenty seven thousand dollars. If you have a three nine, um, and they they've got it tiered off because of test scores. Yeah. Um, so if you have a three nine, depending on your test score, you can get anywhere from eighteen to twenty five thousand dollars academically. So if you get uh, one of the top, if you get the tier four of that. Um, you know, in high test scores, high GPA, your tuition is dropping down to, to $2,000. Um, and then on top of that, we do stack as well. We have blue chip money uh, that our, our teams use, um, that the school, that amount changes uh, what the teams can use that does change every year. Um, so it's really kind of a, we go through and, and I, what I try to do personally, and I, I tell this to all of our recruits, is I try to cover between athletic and academic as much of that tuition as possible. Um, and with the understanding of, you know, what we don't use um, in your, your package is going to get someone else to try to get them close 
to getting that that tuition taken care of. Um, and you know, to me, it's it's kind of a smart strategy that we've used since we've got there. I know, um, you know, it's kind of looking at at how others in, in that department uh, had done scholarships, previous staffs, and things like that. We want to get a little bit more aggressive, um, so women soccer wise, at least, uh, and and be able to kind of get ourselves matched up. Okay, like how can we, uh, you know, bring in the the best players that that we can? Um, and I think it just. It helped us out with the the type of kid that we were recruiting. Uh, obviously, academics is a massive plus, but through that, that gives us the ability to where if that, there's a player whose academics aren't that great, uh, that we can give them a little bit more athletically uh, from that blue chip fund uh, to try to get them kind of as even as possible uh, with with those players who are getting a majority of their their tuition taken care of. Okay. Well, let's let's talk a little bit more about the school itself. You know, there's probably a lot of people who maybe haven't heard of Brescia. Uh, yeah. being being there in Owensboro, but uh, you know, I, I know you're kind of local to that Southern Indiana, Northern Kentucky area there. But yeah. what? So, give me some inside scoop. What are some of the awesome things about Brescia that you know maybe I'm not going to find just by clicking around the website? You know, I, first and foremost, one of the things I've always said, and this, this is kind of like the the previous school I was at too. Imagine we all we all hear about Olympic Village. You know, it's during the Olympics, and it's where all the athletes live. They all hang out together. Um, Brescia's campus is, is basically like Olympic Village. It's, it's all athletes. Um, and, you know, majority of our, our non-student athletes um, do commute or take online classes. Uh, so it's really cool that you as an athlete can come to Brescia and, you know, you get out of class and maybe you're stressing out about a test you have coming up, studying for it, but your team has to travel. Um, you know, whoever you make eye contact with your, when you, while you're walking they're they know what you feel like they, they, they're in that same boat, uh, as compared to, you know, like when I went to school, uh, it wasn't like that. You know, if I had any type of, uh, I hate saying even, I hate even saying complaint, but if there was something I was just like, oh man, like I was stressing about my non-athletic friends were not non-athletic, but my friends who weren't student athletes were like, oh, you've got it so easy. Don't worry. And it's like, no, like we don't have it easy. Uh, so I think it's a really cool environment for um, a player who, um, whether it's soccer or any sport, you know, to be surrounded by people who are going through the same things you're going through. Um, so there's, you know, our athletic community on campus is, is very, very close. And um, I really got to see it um, up close last year. And, and you know, and so sometimes an unfortunate events kind of allows you to see the, the broader picture. Um, we had a, a baseball player pass away last year in a, in a car accident and a guy knew everybody got along, um, for all the, the, all the sports on campus, but that was really my eye opener of how close all the sports are. Um, all the athletes the, you know, you, you'll see, you know, you'll see women's soccer players, but you'll also see some of them talking to track players. You also see some of them talking to basketball players or to golfers, whatever it may be. Um, so I think, you know, to me, the one of the things I really, you know, in that recruiting pitch to someone is really selling that athletic community, uh, and the bond that they have. Uh, we have a very small campus. The way our, our players say it is, do you want to walk 30 minutes in the rain or do you want to walk two minutes in the rain? Um, you know, to, to get from one building to the next. Uh, and the cool part, I, I think too, is we're located in historic downtown Owensboro, right along the riverfront. We're about two and a half, three blocks away from a newly renovated downtown area, uh, right along the riverfront. I always tell people, Google image uh, Owensboro Riverfront. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I think right when my family moved back here a few years back, I think they had just wrapped up um, remodeling all of it and spent way more money than I'll ever know about in my life uh, on their riverfront. And, you know, we're during the beginning of fall and, and the, the late spring, every Friday there's a concert down there. It's a big festival uh, that the whole town comes out for. It's really, you know, just such a really cool place to be at, um, knowing that, you know, hey, I, I can be here on campus, I can live this campus life, but I can also, you know, take a two and a half block walk and be in the downtown area and have the whole riverfront to myself where I can go for a jog and get some fitness in. I, we have players that do picnics down there. We have um, student organizations that do meetings down there just to kind of get away from campus sometimes. Uh, so it's really just a, a, an amazing environment uh, overall to be around with professors that, you know, you're not just a number, they know exactly who you are and you're gonna be able to know who they are too. The relationships that our, our professors have with our, our student athletes has is, is been top notch. 
um, you know, to where, you know, some schools, your professors could care less about uh, your statistics from the night before or, uh, or that you have a game coming up. And, and to see all of our professors have a vested interest in our students, not just in the classroom, but also coming out to watch them play, bringing their families to come watch these kids play. But then also the next day in class, oh, hey, saw your goal last night. Like that was super kid. Cool. My kids were going awesome about it. Uh, you know, that's just something that, uh, you know, a lot of schools uh, try to do and some schools can do it, some schools can't. Uh, but I also think too, educationally, um, having that smaller classroom, uh, you know, I went to a college of only 5,500 people. And I went to a, a high school with only a, barely a thousand. So I'm used to small classrooms. Uh, and it was something that I really like about Brescia is that one-on-one -on -one that you really do have with that professor to where, you know, we've got kids who are doing pre-med biology that are as sophomores already speaking in terms and, and thinking of things that I know either seniors or grad students are doing. And it's because of that one-on-one -on -one time that they're getting um, to really develop themselves in that career for post-soccer. Uh, and that's the thing I love about Brescia is, you know, the, the resources that we give them for soccer to develop as athletes, the school goes above and beyond to double that resource for you and your academic, because we wanna make sure that just like any coach would, you know, if you are a high school coach sending a kid off to college or a college coach sending someone off to, to the pros, you want to make sure that when that kid gets there, they know what they're doing and a coach is going to see them play and go, yeah, they can come in right away and be able to go. We want the same thing for our kids uh, when they go into the work field as well, that when they get that job, that employer's like, this kid knows what they're doing. We can throw them in right away. No, that's, that's awesome. Well, <clears throat> in terms of, you know, during the season, I mean, you're in the thick of it right now, but can you just walk me through, I know there's no such thing as an average week, but walk me <laughs> through uh, what a typical week might look like just in terms of when's practice, when's class, meals, travel for games, what, you know, kind of what does a, a week look like in a quick snapshot? For sure. Um, we'll just go, we'll go off of this week because we, we only have one game this week. Um, so uh, on a typical Monday, not this past Monday because it was Labor Day, typical Monday uh, would be, a, would be a higher intensity training for us. Uh, then we drop it a little bit. Um, on on uh, on Tuesday or on Wednesday, I'm sorry. Monday, Tuesday, higher higher level training. Uh, Wednesday, we bring it down a little bit uh, towards the end as well. On on Tuesday, um, then we have our we have our game on Thursday. We'll have a recovery session on Friday. Uh, I typically, as long as we don't play on Saturday, I will give the kids off the Saturday and Sunday. Um, I always give them Sundays off, no matter what. Uh, but just depending on what we've got uh, coming up. So like next week is when our every Thursday Saturday schedule starts. So this was a week that. Um, you know, ahead of time in our schedule, we know, okay, hey, this is a weekend that as soon as we're, we're done on Thursday, we'll have a, a Friday morning session. Once class is over with, go be with your family. You got some time. Um, we train at 6 a.m. That was a move that we just made this year that has actually been surprisingly really, really good for us. Uh, I know when we first thought about it, the players and myself, because I live 45 minutes away, um, I was dreading that 4 a.m. wake up, but, uh, you know, we all were kind of dreading, but it's been really awesome to not have to fight classes to where we know everybody's going to be there. We don't have to worry about, oh, hey, I got a lab that got moved or you know, I've got this test that's running over. And I think it's a good way to start your day. Uh, and, and our players have really talked about that, too, about their minds are a lot more open uh, going to class. Uh, they're much more awake and alive uh, just because they did get that, that workout in in the morning. So. For us, it's a, it's a train session, 6 to, to 7.30. Uh, then typically afterwards, you can catch all of us at the cafeteria getting breakfast together. Um, and then most of the time, classes start around 8 a.m. Uh, most classes in between 3 and 4, there are the occasional later classes, just depending on what your major may be. Uh, but most of our kids are done. Uh, their days are done between that 3 and 4 range. Um, and then on Fridays, uh, everybody's done at noon. I think there's one or two classes that meet after 12, but everybody's done at noon on Fridays. Um, and I think that's a really cool, like way for the weekend, especially, uh, you know, if there's a chance for, you know, when our season's over with, if a kid, like we said, you know, if a kid wants to, to go back home and hang out with the family for a little bit, they've got the ability to do that and not get home super, super late. Cause, uh, you know, their last class is at noon on, on Friday. So uh, for us, it's, it's just the training sessions in the morning. We want you to be a student during the day. Uh, and on top of that, uh, because we don't train in the evenings, you can be involved in a student organization on campus, which I think is huge uh, for, for student athletes if they have the ability to do that. Uh, myself, I, I love the fact that not only could I 
be a soccer player, but I was also student government president or student senate, I believe it was called when I was at school, um, you know, have, being able to have that on my resume. Uh, so for us, it's we want our kids active and involved in as many uh, of those organizations as possible uh, because we're going to give them time to do so. Okay. Awesome. Well, let's shift gears a little bit, talk about the, the soccer side of things. Do, uh, we'll talk about the roster right now, but do you have a, an ideal roster size that you're trying to hit every year? Yeah. So right now the, the school, obviously being a smaller school, we have numbers, uh, you know, and, and the school would like for 24, even from the time I got there, I've always said 28 is really kind of what I want to get to. And the reason why I want to do that is my very first day ever in college, I was at Division One University of Evansville with Mike Jacobs, who's now at Nashville SC. Uh, the very first day he, he told me, he said, there's always going to be six people gone or hurt, whether they're hurt or they're in class, there's always going to be six. Just always keep that number in your mind. And if that's the case and you want to play 11 v 11, you got to have 22. He's like, so 22 plus, plus six is, is 28. So I've always said the 28 uh, is the number I want to get to. Uh, I, I don't want to go over, I don't want to go over 30 whatsoever. Um, but, you know, we want to get to a point with our, our team, we want to play 20, 25 kids a game. Uh, and, and I think that we're in the time that I've been there, we're starting to get to that. I, I know this year there's been numerous times where we've played uh, where we've played 20 so far this year in a game, uh, we want to continue to to build that number up um, and and you know get um, you know our our depth is is a little bit better this year. I think we're gonna get deeper even more so next year. Uh, we're, we're upgrading all over the field, whether it's a game changer, whether it's a starter. Uh, you know, it's been a constant progress, and I, I think we're definitely going to see the uh, the the rewards from from the work we put in recruiting wise over these next couple of years. Okay. I know we talked a little about this before because uh, I know from my days out that way, uh, one of your staff, but but can you talk about your soccer staff and then the support staff maybe from the athletic department? What role does everybody play? Who, who's there helping you out? Yeah, so on our staff, uh, we got uh, Holly Cato, who's, who's in charge of our goalkeepers. Um, Holly was one of the first people I called. I, I knew when I got the job, I, the first thing I was like, we have to get a goalkeeper coach. Um, and, and I can remember when I met the players too uh, during my interview, uh, the goalkeepers were very vocal of like, get a goalkeeper coach. Uh, so that was kind of a priority for me. And, and Holly has been around this area for a while. She does a really good job. Um, and and we're, we're so thankful to have her her with us. Uh, and, and and the players really have taken a uh, taken into her. Uh, you know, she, she always makes the mistake of telling people she's not a huggable person. But when you tell that to a group that's so loving, they're going <laughs> to hug you. So, you know, we, we kind of bring that side out of her a little bit. Um, obviously, Scott Wilson, that's on our staff. Scott's, uh, you know, not just a friend of mine, but a mentor as well. Uh, he knows the area very well. He's got college experience. Uh, and, and Scott's a game changer for us. You know, when he first started getting involved with us, we noticed um, a drastic difference in our team. Uh, and, and I'm a person that, uh, you know, I'm never going to sit here and claim to know everything. And then I joke with people all the time, I'm a much better recruiter than I am a coach. Uh, you know, but when you can surround yourself with people who know the things that you may not know, uh, it's only going to make the whole thing work together a lot more. Uh, so there's, you know, I'm not going to say Scott's age, but his wisdom and his experience, <laughs> uh, you know, definitely helps out uh, for us uh, a lot more than what he thinks. And we just added um, Aaron McGuire, who just graduated actually from Brescia. Um, Aaron's got a really cool story that, yeah, she was a player for us, but she was also working on her UEFA B at the exact same time. Oh, wow. uh, Aaron was wanting to get coaching into the college game when she graduated. Um, you know, I tried to get her connected with as many coaches as I knew that I could get her connected with. Uh, she had a couple club opportunities uh, to direct some ECNL teams and whatnot, and and just ultimately felt like college was where she wanted to be at. She wanted to, to work coach at a college, and uh, Brescia just happened to have an admissions job that uh, Aaron's very well known uh, on campus. Uh, everybody from every staff uh loves Aaron and you know I think when they made the opportunity for her to to come back and work at admissions she reached out to me and was like hey do you think it'd be okay if I could coach with you and I was like absolutely you know I, I would never say no to that so um you know so our, our staff I think uh you know while while we're uh still kind of young to each other I, I think we're continuing to grow uh, as is our team um you know support staff wise you know our athletic director Sarah Gaylor uh who I always have to throw in there the only female men's basketball coach uh right now she's she's so awesome her and um our athletic supervisor chris halk who's also our vp of enrollment um those two i mean you want to talk about having i even hate calling them bosses but i mean they are my boss um you know the support that they give me uh in our program you know chris when he came on with us 
uh, as, a, as a soccer coach himself, coaches uh, club in, in our town. Um, you know, and just the confidence that they, they give me of, hey, you know, you know, you, you know what you're doing. Keep doing it. Keep bringing uh, kids in here and let's, let's get this thing rolling. So, you know, just that constant um, motivation and support from them. You know, Chris attends our games or he watches them online. And, and for him, he's been at Brescia for over 14 years now. So he has truly seen the progression that we've made in this program uh, just in the last three years to where, you know, yeah, we lost the other night. And we came off the field and, you know, as a coach, you're just kind of dejected. And, and Chris comes up and he's like, you guys completed 65 passes in one half. Like that's never happened here. He's like, you know, just continuing on to support. So, um, you know, I think that's something that our players are recognizing too, is that support is, is coming around and and things are definitely good at, at Brush University. And I'm really excited about uh, about the future of, of the school, not just the school, but the athletic department as well. Um, and I think anybody who, who's on the inside can tell you that there's a lot of excitement coming uh, and, and it's super awesome to be a part of it. That's great. Well, coach, we've covered a lot of ground, talked about a lot of things, but I always end these the same way. And that's what didn't we talk about? What else did, do you want to mention, reiterate anything else, whether it's recruiting the school, the team or anything else in general, uh, you know, give you one last, oh, one last shout out. Oh, let's see here. I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to my family, my <laughs> wife, uh, Casey and, and my two kids, Quinn and Duke. Um, I also have to, to shout out, uh, my boy, Nick Rizzo, he and I have a podcast that's always on delay, uh, whenever, uh, we're in season, uh, but it's called soccer chat. We have a Wednesday night, um, Twitter Q and a one that anybody can follow. Just go to the hashtag soccer chat. Um, man, uh, gosh, I'm, I'm drawn up like normally, like I'm not lost for words, but, uh, <laughs> I would also say too, like, you know, our program, anybody can follow us online. It's Brescia W S O C Brescia W sock. Um, you know, we're always willing to talk to, to players, to coaches. Um, and the thing for me as, as a coach, you know, if somebody's listening to this, I'm easy to reach out to. I, I'd love to connect with as many people as possible because I truly believe that networking is the big thing. Uh, and I, in the soccer world, it's so cool how it's so big, but yet it's so small. How many connections you can have with someone that you may have just met, like, you know, getting on here, talking with you and you're like, oh, I know Scott. I'm like, oh, I know Scott too. <laughs> um, it's so crazy how the, how that soccer coaching world is so big, but yet it's still so small. Uh, so I love networking. I'm at Coach Soderling on all platforms. I'm probably the worst TikTok uh, follow ever. Um, and I, I do have to give a, a disclaimer. If you do follow me on social media, I'm probably the worst soccer coach on, on social because I don't just only talk about soccer and that's not a knock on people who soccer coaches who do not a knock on you whatsoever. I'm just a person of, I know like with recruiting, if I'm interested in a team, I'm going to go find the players and see what they're about. If I can find the coach, I'm going to go see what they're about. So I really use social media as a, as a way to show who I really am. And I, I am more than just a soccer coach. I am a husband and a father um, and, and a fan of so many other uh, sports and, and things in life, uh, a massive golfer. So uh, apologies ahead of time if I don't do enough soccer stuff for everybody on, on social media. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just an exciting time to be a part of the sisterhood. And we love uh, all of our support that we have from, from not just in the country, but all over the world. And, um, you know, thank you again so much for, for having me on here with you. Enjoy what you guys are doing. Uh, and just uh, thankful to, to pop on and be a part of it, too. Well, thank you and appreciate your time and wish you the best of luck the rest of this season. And uh, hopefully, well, I, 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 it's going to be hard when you play Oakland City. I don't know who, who I'll root for in that one, but maybe, maybe we'll just we'll root for a draw. But anyway. <laughs> I, so, so I really like – Katie's a good friend of mine that's their, yeah. their coach now. Uh, last year we did defeat them. It was our first okay. conference win in, in school history. Um, you know, I like, like I said, I like Katie. I, I like Oakland City as well. Um, you can say on, on the podcast that you want to go for a draw, but, you know, we'll talk afterwards, and I, I think we'll get you on the brush side. That works. That works. All right. <laughs> well, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk soon. No problem, man. Thank you. Take care.